Hi guys, and welcome to my Inktober sketchbook tour. Um, to start off with, I guess we'll just talk about the supplies that I used for Inktober, and I'm gonna link everything down below in the description box, so check that if you miss anything. But um, I pretty much used the same supplies throughout the entire Inktober, and I thought it gave my sort of Inktober pieces a little bit more of a uniform type look, which was pretty cool. Um, so for most of the line work, I was using my Copic multi-liners. Uh, I just have four different sizes of these and uh, just basic black color. Um, I also had the Pentel pocket brush pen and I used this for some of the lines that I wanted to be a bit more fluid and, and brush strokey and also I used it a lot for like blacking out things like having black in the background or anything that I wanted to have just like really dark black contrast. This is like a super black ink and it's awesome. And um, then I used the Dr. PH Martin Bombay India ink. I actually have a bunch of colors of these. Mostly I used black, but I did sneak in a few little colors here and there. Uh, here's the red one that you guys can see. And what I did is I essentially combined it with water to create different ink washes. And um, one thing I did, I got these Pentel Aquash brush pens and I made my ink washes like before Inktober and just filled them up with the ink wash so I wouldn't have to worry like after work when I'm like don't have enough time to draw as it is making the ink washes, you know, like who has time for that? Um, so yeah, this was like super helpful and I have like a couple of these with the different washes and I totally used this one up. This was my standard gray ink wash. So and then for like minor tiny little details, I used this wee tiny little watercolor brush. So yeah, that's mostly it for the tools I used. The sketchbook is a handbook um, travelogue, the watercolor version that they do. So it's got nice heavy watercolor paper inside. The cover's like a, a linen cover. And it was actually exactly the right number of pages for Inktober, which was so satisfying to get to the end of the month and finish the sketchbook. That was super cool. I was a fan of that. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. I just want to let you guys know I have already sold a few drawings, stupidly, before I filmed this tour. So this isn't going to be totally complete. If you want to see all of my Inktober stuff, head over to my Instagram. I posted all of them there. So yeah, that was my bad. So anyway, first one. This is actually day two um, from Inktober. And I really liked how this one turned out. Inktober was cool for me because it I tried to push myself out of my comfort zone in terms of like subject matter that I drew. Um, like I'm so not comfortable with drawing animals. I find them like so frustrating. Like you have to learn a whole new set of anatomy almost. I don't know. That's just how I feel. But um, I find animals very hard and Inktober definitely challenged me to draw more animals just because I didn't want to be drawing like a person over and over again for 31 days that's like gets super duper boring um so anyway yeah i was really happy with this one um i actually took from a prompt list there are some really cool prompt lists um this year and i kind of picked and choose between you know a couple different ones and also made up my own prompts so yeah this was really fun and i really loved all the prompt lists that were going around um this one is kind of like I always fell back on hands, like if I didn't know what to draw in Inktober, I'd be like, all right, hand practice, let's do this. So yeah, it was really fun and I do think that it helped me improve with hands, just doing these kind of more study pieces. And again, like pushing myself out of my comfort zone in terms of subject matter, like normally before Inktober, I would have been like, oh, it doesn't have a person's face in it and it can't be a real drawing. But <laughs> I kind of got myself out of that mindset through Inktober and drew pieces that were just like focused in on something specific like hands or objects or, you know, just zooming in on something small rather than feeling like I have to like um, have like a full person in a drawing, if that makes sense. You guys will notice a recurring theme of witches throughout my Inktober stuff. I mean, it was October, so you, you kind of have to draw witches. Um, yeah, this one was just inspired by 
sort of the more craft, crafty side of, of witchcraft, she's making some kind of potion. I don't know what. I didn't have a ton of time to think up stories and like what these drawings mean. I just kind of went for it each day. But yeah, I was pretty happy with this one. And it was kind of a different angle, like drawing from behind that, again, I don't really do. And I definitely think I also improved with that in Inktober. Okay, this one is actually two separate days. Um, the sketchbook was like one day short, so it had like 30 pages, so I had to double up for one day. And I came up with this. Uh, this was like day seven and day 15 or something like that, so they weren't like right next to each other. Um, it was kind of, you know, something when I wanted to do something easy, I would kind of do these more just bust or face type images. And I really wanted to make these ones sort of pair together and look good together on the page. So I had kind of like the eye theme and like open eye, closed eye kind of thing. And yeah, I really like how they look and I really like how they look together as well. So that one was like super fun. Okay, uh, this one was a struggle day. <laughs> it was definitely a struggle day. I had my fair share of struggle days during Inktober. And I was just like, I had an idea in my head of what I wanted to draw, and it wasn't working at all. Like, nothing was getting down on paper. And so I just forgot about it and just drew, like, mindless drawing, and then this came up. So I, I guess it's cool. <laughs> um, again, it's kind of pushing myself to do something a little different in terms of the composition and how you're viewing the sort of subject of the drawing. You know, from behind, it's definitely, you know, there's no face. And that's something I never used to do, so I'm really happy. I think this one definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone a lot in terms of, you know, how how I frame the composition and stuff. And it was super fun! Haha, <laughs> struggle piece number two! I hate this one. <laughs> like, I actually hate this one. Um, you know, we all have drawings that we don't like, and that's totally okay. And, you know, it's here. I did it. I accomplished that day of Inktober. It was a struggle, but I did it. Um, and I'm happy that I did that, and I got a piece I don't like, and you know, that's fine. You know, I learned from it, which is important, I think, when you're doing these kind of challenges to understand that like some drawings aren't gonna be your favorite, and some of them you're gonna love, and the ones that are your, aren't your favorite, try to figure out like why you don't like them, and um, use that to make your next piece better kind of, if that makes sense. Um, so the reason I didn't like this one, I think the eyes don't really match. I think that just the style doesn't match the rest of it. I think I made her a little too cartoony, if that makes sense. Like the eyes and the head are just a little big and I don't know, it's just not my favorite, but I learned from it and that's cool. And pumpkin snake. This was a day that I just didn't really want to draw. So I went for something simple, and pumpkins were the first thing I thought of, seeing as it was Halloween season and stuff like that. And I just decided to add a snake to it, one, to get more animal practice, and two, to make it more interesting with just a basic pumpkin. Not that pumpkins aren't interesting, pumpkins are pretty epic. Do you guys carve pumpkins? I know we're like way past Halloween now, but we never carve ours because then they rot and then like it's sad and your pumpkin friends just wither and die and it's super depressing. So we usually keep ours like, um, you know, just full pumpkins and sit them in our, in our living room and stuff. I actually have a pumpkin friend here. I still have my pumpkin friends. I get so like protective of them. I don't want to let them, I don't want to like get rid of them even though Halloween is over. They could be Christmas decorations, right? Right? Pumpkins are Christmas? That's what we're going for. Okay, this is a cursed page. This is an evil cursed page and this drawing is actually like day 30, I think. And I tried to draw on it like at least three or four times before then and every single time I tried drawing on it it just turned out like absolutely horrible and I just had to erase everything and just turn the page and go to a different page and start over because I don't know do you guys ever have cursed pages in your sketchbook like a page that you just get super intimidated by or that you've failed so many times on that you just like feel like you can't beat it I don't know I usually have at least one cursed page in my sketchbook and I was super happy when I finally beat the curse though. Like day 30, beat the curse. Felt good, felt good. 
This one was me kind of uh, trying to draw skeletons or skeletal-esque things. Um, I don't know, I've never tried drawing bones or skeletons or anything like that before, so I was like super intimidated by them because they seem so detailed. And yeah, this one kind of got me out of my comfort zone there and was really fun and I did a few more, at least one more skeletal piece I know of during October. But yeah, this one's super fun. I like how it turned out. I do have a drawing video of this, of me inking and coloring and all that. So I'm gonna link that up in the cards and also in the description if you guys wanna watch. Yay, more hands. Again, didn't know what to draw, so I drew a hand. Um, and then I put a bug on it because bugs are adorable. Actually, it was supposed to be a scarab, like an Egyptian scarab, and I just really like Egyptian scarabs, so I don't know. Not much else to say about that. Oh, this was actually the first one I tried a gradient on, like going from dark ink to lighter ink or like a smooth transition wash. I kind of found myself staying safe in terms of the techniques that I used for inking. Like one of my goals for Inktober was trying to learn new inking techniques and I feel like I didn't accomplish that because I was always so afraid to mess up a drawing because I had it in my mind that I wanted to make a zine and I wanted everything to be, you know, good enough to be in a mini book. So I found myself not letting myself experiment and sort of play with the mediums, you know? And uh, that was kind of upsetting. If I do it again next year, I really want to focus on that. Rather than having perfect drawings, I want to focus on playing with ink because it's fun. Um, but yeah, this was me trying to experiment a little bit. Just putting your, putting my toe in the water and trying something ever so slightly new. Okay, this one was another sort of more object drawing and it was super fun. I used my little sage smudge stick as a, as a model for it. He modeled it beautifully. And um, I don't know, I just threw some eyes on there because it was looking kind of this, I thought this would be like a big solid lump of gray and it would be kind of boring. So we kind of already had these lines going on and I decided to turn some of them into eyeballs. I have no idea what it means, those are just random eyeballs, but <laughs> we're going with it. Um, I really liked how the smoke turned out with this one. I wanted to get that sort of like wispy look to it that if you guys like use sage or smudge sticks or anything, you know that the smoke looks like super wispy and super pretty. So I wanted to capture that and I don't know, I really like this one. This one was really fun to work on. And then this one I think was day 18. Now we're on to day 18 and it was literally just an excuse to draw sheer stripey lingerie. Which you don't really need an excuse for, you should just draw sheer stripey lingerie whenever you want to, let's be real. Um, but yeah, it was really fun. I just really wanted to focus on you know, getting the anatomy right with this one, and I think that the sort of hair draping really kind of framed her nicely. So, yeah, that one was really fun. More witches. You're gonna see more witches. This is another skeleton adventure. Um, this one was inspired by kind of like the idea behind Halloween and sort of like All, All Hallows Eve when the the spirit world and our world kind of collide or the the doors open or it's easier to move between them so i wanted to have you know like a physical world and a spirit world representation and again trying out with animals um it was this was super fun actually doing the rabbit skeleton i got like so much reference up of like rabbit skeletons and stuff and it was just really kind of therapeutic to draw all the bones if that makes sense um yeah this one i was like I didn't initially have this branch here and it was feeling really top heavy because of all the detail up here and so I decided to add in a sprig of rosemary because rosemary fits in the theme. It's um, very much associated with the spirit realm and communications with spirits and welcoming in spirits into your home and stuff like that and I think the darkness and the detail down here really kind of balance it out. And yeah, I was really happy with how this one turned out and it was totally like out of my box. Ooh, next one. This is the one that was inspired by Plague Doctors. And um, I wanted to kind of do a different take on it because if you kind of look into the history of them, they were trying to 
they were trying to heal the people with the Black Death, even though they they had a negative association and people were afraid of them because seemingly when they showed up, people started dying. But really, it was the other way around. People started dying and then they showed up to try to help. Unfortunately, their medical practices like had no no effect on the Black Death, so you know it didn't really do much. But hey, they they tried. They tried. Um, but yeah, historically, the beak mask, although it looks super duper scary, they actually used it um, to store like fragrant like herbs, fragrant flowers, fragrant oils, things like that. Anything that had a really strong scent or a really strong pleasant scent because they, they truly believed that the, the disease was spread by bad smells, which of course was not true, but at least they got to smell nice things while they were helping people who were dying. I don't know. So anyway, this one is kind of a take on that where I have the, the roses kind of coming out of the mask and the sort of floral tattoos. This is like a mint. They used mint a lot. They used rose a lot. Um, and yeah, that was super fun. And it, it's kind of interesting to look into these historical things and try to try to base drawings on them. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I'm like a total history nerd. So I nerded out a little bit there. Uh, this one is my Witch Sona. And uh, essentially it's just me in my regular clothes with a witch hat on, like this is legit what I wear. Um, but yeah, I've wanted to draw a witch sona for a while. I actually have another witch sona idea that I really want to do. And it's essentially like a witch who rides instead of a flying broomstick, a flying bicycle and it's like covered in plants. But I'm super intimidated on drawing bicycles, so I'm putting it off. I'm putting it off. But anyway, this one was super fun. It was actually good practice to draw curly hair, which I strangely hardly ever draw because it's terrifying. Oh, ghost backpack. This one, I legit just drew my Fjall Raven Konkin backpack. It was just sitting on my desk and I drew it and I decided to put a ghost in it because who doesn't want a cute ghost friend hanging out in their backpack all the time? That would be so amazing. You just always have a friend with you and it's adorable. I would like that. I would like a haunted backpack. <laughs> oh, this one was fun. I had this idea pretty much since the beginning of Inktober. Actually, since like months and months ago, I wanted to draw a sort of vintage 1800s vampire hunting kit. And these things actually exist. I don't know if they're actually vintage, like real, or if they're just people who are making them to look like they're vintage, but it's still super epic. Like, look them up. There's so many cool ones out there. And essentially, it's just a case that a vampire hunter would bring with them so they have all the supplies they need, like garlic, crucifix, holy water, um, you know, silver bullets, like wooden stakes, rosary, mirrors, because vampires don't have a reflection, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it was super duper fun to kind of look up like all the things that a vampire hunter would need and again, super out of my comfort zone because structure, like I've never drawn something this structured before. And then all the objects as well, it's just, it was a lot of stuff. It took me a really long time, but I'm very happy that I actually accomplished it. All right, we got another witch, guys. This is a, I don't know, Tea Witch 2.0. I've already drawn a Tea Witch before, but you know, tea and witches just go so perfectly together that I had to do another one. Um, I wanted to capture like a really calm vibe to this one. This was like towards the end of October and I was starting to get really, really tired of drawing constantly. And I just wanted to sit down and rest and relax with a cup of tea, but I couldn't because I had to finish my October pieces. So this was kind of me living vicariously through my drawings, just wanting to sit and just drink tea. And yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it has like a really serene kind of calm look to it. And yeah, I really, I really liked this one. This one's a witch hat. This was a, I don't give a crap day and I just need to get something on paper because I don't feel like drawing. So I drew a witch hat. The foliage that I put on it is, um, this is a doll's eye plant, which is a super epic plant. You guys should look it up. Basically, it just has these, the stalks are like a pinkish red color, and then the berries are white, and the little dots are black. So it legit looks like eyeball stalks just growing out of a plant. It is actually amazing, and one of my favorite plants ever. So I had to use that for the foliage in this hat, and it was super fun to draw. I kind of have a thing for creepy, weird, smelly plants. 
I just think they're the coolest thing ever and I would love to have like a super creepy garden that has like all the creepy smelly plants instead of like the pretty roses and stuff that you normally see in gardens. I think that would be so much fun. Okay, this one is based on my favorite tarot card, The Hermit, and um, I knew that I wanted to do one tarot-inspired drawing for Inktober, and it just seemed right to do my favorite one, but I really wanted to play with the sort of illumination and like the contrast with this piece, which is why I did the sort of white lines in the black background. And um, I wanted to have it, you know, try to tie in some of the symbolism. There's like a butt ton of symbolism that goes along with tarot cards. And, you know, I don't understand nearly half of it, but I'm learning. Um, so she has her eyes closed and her third eye open. So she kind of represents, you know, like internal, you know, being with yourself, thinking for yourself, you know, internal meditation, that kind of thing. And, but, and through that, being able to see the way. So... Uh, too deep there? I don't know. Sorry guys. But yeah, I was really happy with how this one turned out and it'd be super fun to like design a whole tarot deck someday, but I have a lot more of learning to do to really know what the cards mean fully. Um, yeah. And this is day 31, last day. Woohoo! And obviously I had to fit my character London in there. She is a demon. She has way too much sash. She's also way too lazy and gets bored like super easy so usually she can't be bothered with just about anything um but she's also kind of a jerk i thought she fit in very well with kind of like the halloween theme and this was initially going to be posted on halloween as sort of her dressing up you know going all out for halloween you know international night of mischief getting out there causing a ruckus but I was a little bit behind and I ended up finishing this like three days into November or something like that. Um, what? Hey, it's fine. Like I didn't finish during October, but I finished and I'm happy with that. Um, this one was really fun because I got to play with like sheer material, which again is something I haven't explored too much. Um, so the lace was like super fun to do and I definitely want to draw more lace in the future. So yeah, that is my Inktober sketchbook tour minus a few drawings. Again, if you guys want to see all of them, including the ones that have already sold and gone to their new homes, you can check out my Instagram, which I'm going to put on the screen right here. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this sketchbook tour. Um, I absolutely love watching sketchbook tours. I hope I'm not too awkward in terms of this live talking thing, but that was my Inktober. I hope you guys had a great Inktober if you participated. If you didn't participate, I hope you had fun watching everyone else's drawings. It was super inspiring to see what everyone else was creating during Inktober and it just kept me going to see all the amazing stuff that the artists I follow were putting out. So anyway, I have prints of a few of them as well as stickers of a few of them. And I do also have originals for sale. If you guys are interested in an original, best way is to send me a DM on Instagram. And again, my Instagram will be down below. So yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. And I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.